Okay, so let's just talk about um, the genetic background and ewe lambs and, you know, what some of those differences are and, um, and about the weights, right? So the reality is, is, is sexual development's affected both genetic and environmental factors and the interaction between the both, right? And the best example of this is in cats, you know, like pet cats. Mm -hmm. So if you have a pet cat, it is not actually seasonal. The moment a pet cat returns to feral environment and goes back to being feral, it becomes seasonal. And the seasonality of cats can be affected really quickly by their environmental or their environment. Okay, yes. Yeah. So the reality is is uh, sexual development is affected by both genetics and environmental factors. Now, in sheep, not so much that, but those environmental factors are feed on offer. If you don't feed new lambs effectively so that, that they hit their weight and growth timelines, okay, puberty is restricted and anestrus is lengthened. There's really big differences between breeds, both in the age and weight at first estrus. For instance, who sheep in China will come to their first estrus at five months and about 30 kilos? Merinos will come to first estrus reliably at about eight months and 44 to 48 kilos. British breed sheep take much longer to achieve their first estrus and they need to be heavier in weight. And then all the others, the composites, the first cross are somewhere in between. The other thing is there's significant variation between individual ewes. That is why some sheep will become pregnant at seven months and some sheep won't become pregnant till 10 months. Not all sheep are the same. We think they're the same because we love to average, don't we? So sheep have a 17-day Easter cycle. Well, sheep have a 13 to 21-day Easter cycle. We just average it at 17 days. New lambs come to puberty at 45 kilos, 75% of their mature weight in seven months. It's a bit of a wild average. It's not one of those things. It's all of those things. And some sheep will and some sheep won't. So crossbred ewes tend to have way better performance into puberty than um, purebred. Um, and genetic effects, they can be obscured. So that plane of nutrition and the season of birth. So a ewe lamb, a ewe that is born in autumn, would normally come to its first true estrus in its first autumn, 12 months. A ewe born in spring will come to its first true estrus in its first autumn, eight months. Spring to autumn is eight months. Autumn to autumn is 12 months. All right, when you're talking about ewe lambs, when were they born? So that's um, that's really critical. Um, there's, I keep coming back to that, They, you know, the variation between age and weight. However, most of them fall into between six and 18 months of age. There are exceptions, three and four months we see it. And then the weight variation is really, really high. But it's around that 30 to 50 kilo mark, okay, depending on the breed depending on the conditions. So this is just gen generally speaking. So we think, we, we see this, so British breeds achieve puberty at a younger age than Merinos. Care must be taken when generalising about the minimum age and weight. And the same is expressed as an adult percentage. But, you know, like the, the MLA say seven months, 45 kilos, 75% of mature weight. I think that first case is between 50 and 70% of mature weight but sometimes it's eight or nine months is closer to reliable expression. So this is why, in my opinion, there is such a variation between ewe lamb joinings from farm to farm. So one guy gets 85% and one guy gets 30%. Oh, my ewe lambs, oh, ewe lambs, I can't get them to join. The first question to ask is when are you trying to join them? When were they born? How heavy are they? Total body protein may be a more accurate indicator 
uh, to sexual development than total body weight, i.e. muscle and fat is not the same as muscle. So if you have ewe lambs that have got, you know, like they're 45 or 48 kilos, but they're fat, they have less chance of achieving puberty of a lean 40 kilo ewe. So, you know, have you ever heard the expression, uh, you know, like we used to put the fat heifers on the road to join them? Yep. Okay, and it was a classic. We'd have heifers that would grow out in a paddock, plenty of feed, and they'd be as fat as mud. Yep. Yes. And your dear old dad used to put them on the road, <coughs> graze the edges, knock it off, knock, knock the edge off them, thin them down a bit, and then bring them back in, put them back on good feed and and join them up. Yep. Now, he, he just did that because his granddad did it. Yeah, that's right. But the reality is <laughs> when we come back to looking at it, it's like lean body mass is, is critically important more so than to total body weight. So a you that's total body weight is driven on fat as opposed to muscle may not achieve puberty as readily as a lean animal. They can have fat, just not too much fat. Too much. So that if you separated the fat off the animal, yes. it would weigh 30 kilos. But when you weigh it all together, bones, muscle and fat, it weighs 60 kilos. But the reality is it's a 30 kilo protein animal. As opposed to say you've got a merino that's got a you know a fat content of seven percent opposed to a fat content of a crossy of sixteen percent. That's part of the challenge that we're starting to see. Now, this will be a surprise to everybody. Flushing prior to mating may not have a clear effect on new lambs because flushing does what? Increases the rate of ovulation. But it doesn't increase the ability to cycle. It yeah. increases the rate of ovulation. So it means that those ewes that can achieve a cycle will increase their rate of ovulation so you push the twinning rate up in your ewe lambs. So it may not have the clear effect that people are after. Uh, there's a really close association between general body growth and the growth and development of reproductive organs. Um, that sounds fairly self-explanatory. Uh, underfeeding uh, can seriously retard uh, pubescent development. Uh, high plane feeding may advance puberty, okay? Really high plane control feeding where protein and energy is managed. So you lay down really good lean muscle, can have the ability to advance puberty. And this was really interesting because this came up in more than one study. Twin lambs tend to experience their first estrus at an older mean age and a lower body weight. We think that's about the, you know, the compensation uh, of growth after weaning. Twin lambs tend to wean at a less weight. Then they tend to shoot away once they have been weaned, whereas single lambs tend to say, you know, like on a, on a sort of steady progression, if you will. Um, slow growth rates slow down the percentage of ewe lambs attaining puberty and high energy diets prior to breeding may increase barrenness in ewe lambs possible due to fatness. We see this in... Um, containment fed ewe lambs high energy low protein protein energy ratio is not quite right so you see a lot of fat laid down you see it's a really big complaint isn't it okay increased levels of fat estrogen is stored in fat you <coughs> elevate the level of estrogen you repress reproductive event in ewes that's where the birth control pill works in humans Increase the amount of estrogen stored in the body, it represses progesterone, therefore an ovulation doesn't occur. Normal growth patterns uh, uh, affects reproductive potential in a positive way. Now, this was really interesting, the way nutrition is utilised. Maternal body weight increases. Uh, lamb birth weight tends to decrease when you increase the protein intake too far. It's all about ratios. So this was really evident when we were doing work at the University of Queensland when we started to increase the levels of feed stuff, thinking that we would get twice as much drive when, in fact, when you put the feed ratios out of balance, it had a really big adverse effect on sheep. Too much energy, 
not enough protein, too much protein, not enough energy, too much probiotic, and, you know, too much was as bad as too little. Everything is about balance, and it's one of the challenges that you'll face in the field when people say, oh, what's the calcium, what's the calcium percentage in that pre-lambing lick? Okay, the calcium percentage is not as critical as the calcium to magnesium ratio. All right, it's all about ratios in sheep. You've got to balance them well. Uh, protein to any ratio in addition to feeding is more critical in new lambs than it is in older, sexually experienced and mature ewes. So it doesn't matter when they're born, autumn or winter months is when uh, ewe lambs you know, experience estrus. And this is daylight environment. Suggested means that it's in a few papers that I couldn't really say it was defined, but it's interesting to know. Um, might be a critical factor in regula regulating breeding activity. So it's about circadian rhythm. And cycles can be modified but not changed in new lambs. What does that mean? They'll still cycle, um, but you can change the length of the cycle period. Fantastic. Absolutely correct. So when you alter the feed, um, I wonder if I've got a graph for that. So when you alter condition score and feed in ewe lambs, you can you can shorten the an estrus period and lengthen the length of time estrus does occur. So it was work done on merinos in New Zealand and it was 0.25 of a condition score. When you increased from 2.5 to 2.75, the length of an estrus shortened and therefore the length of estrus expression lengthened. So 0.25 of a condition score had a lot of difference. It can be modified, but it can't be changed. Look, seasonality is an important um, factor in puberty in new lambs. You know, even with Reglan, I always suggest that later joinings are better than earlier joinings. I always like to think starting in December, you'll really start to see some big improvements. That's in that 80 to 85% conception. And before that, it's you'll get 20% more than if you didn't use it. So it's really important, that terminology. It really is clear between date of birth and date of first estrus. If they're born in, in autumn, then you would expect them to come to puberty in their first autumn they're born in spring first autumn so there's a difference however it's not fixed there's really a lot of variables in in new lambs i can't find any real research about temperature so i would assume that the impact of temperature on new lambs will be similar as it is on mature sheep so Mature ewes start to be impacted by temperatures that are greater than 32 degrees. And they're impacted significantly by temperatures that are greater than 32 degrees when there is no reduction of temperature of a night time or in times of high humidity. Ewes internalise their temperature and their regulation is internalised, so they have to be cooled down and it's the temperature change between day and night um, sunlight and shade, etc. And that was really interesting is removal of fleece. So shearing towards the end of an estrus was found to advance the first estrus in adult use. So it doesn't doesn't have that same impact in ewe lamb. So basically, you know, people that are joining early, they need to knock the wool off early. It's an oldie but a goodie. Now, this is something that's really critical. Use that display or when a ewe has ewe lamb has estrus displays estrus it can be very weak to detect for the ewe for for the ram um they make no or little attempt to approach the ram but will stand to accept the service but they don't literally seek out a, a ram like a, a sexually experienced and mature ewe does they're much shorter in the period of expression so if a, an older ewe expresses estrus between 18 to 36 hours, then a ewe lamb is, is between 6 and 12 hours. And it can be much lower than that. Like it could be, you know, hours or, in fact, there's lots of recording where it's in minutes. So rams, you know, vary in their efficiency in detecting that estrus 
and their um, urge to mate with new lambs. That's in all conditions, paddock, confinement, everything. Now, that's really critical when you are joining new lambs or maidens. You need to join them separately from older, sexually experienced ewes. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is, is because a ram will seek out an older ewe by preference. They're easier to join. They stand. They seek them out. It's easier. They did some work on this uh, a few years ago at Armidale where they um, did some joining research on a you secured in a pen, a ram secured in a pen, and ewes and rams in a pen. And the most successful model was the ram secured in the pen, and the ewes just backed up onto the ram. Make no mistake about it, ewes will back up to a ram. That was born out in the research. Um, but certainly rams show preference to older ewes. So it's really important. I can't hammer that enough. Um, first estrus is later and shorter for you lambs than for older ewes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the number of cycles can vary from, you know, one to, I don't know where they came up with 11. Um, that was a downing um, research. But depending on the breed, the condition and time of season is how many cycles they um, occur. And low growth rates tend to interrupt the, the regularity of estrus. So it can be a bit hit and miss. Okay, so just it all comes back to if you're going to have a U, you, you have to manage the U to be a reproductive machine. That means that she can't get ignored. Sheep farmers are much better at it than dairy farmers. Dairy farmers are terrible for just chucking their heifers out into a paddock and ignoring them until it's time to bring them back in to join them. So key points. They are really big cost. Um, to the flock if they're not producing. Are you on a farm that doesn't produce a lamb is just a pure cost. And the longer you have her before she produces a lamb, the greater the cost she has for her lifetime, which is why joining new lambs has become really a critical part of business because she'll get an extra two or three lambs in, a, in her life of productivity. Dry ewes, dry ewe lambs, another year without producing. So I just, I, you know, if farmers have got the numbers and they do everything right, especially with Reglan, if they don't join, in my place they don't get two goes. They just get one. Really important. Look, they're really delicate to manage their age, weight, mating periods, joining management of the flock, you know, mating with or separate. That all needs to be considered. And it's fine for us to sit and, you know, tell a farmer what to do, but he might not be able to manage the separation of ewe lambs, you know, older ewes. He might have to join them in one mob. So, you know, how do we how do we help them with that? How do we, you know, like make it work a bit better? That's when you start to think, well, you know, can I surge the rams? Can I run 2% at the start and then put another half a percent or another full percent of rams in 25 days later so I can give those ewe lambs a bit of a, a another kick along. You know, like there's lots of different strategies around managing reproduction in sheep, but what the really key thing would be to, is to join them separately. Very, very deep in anestrus in September and October. It's really, really hard to get them to cycle up. Really tough. Melatonin improves fertility but the best results are December through to March. Okay, so they're slightly different because they come to peak estrus later. So you can still be using regular them into the start of March in new lambs. All right, anything before December, 20% more than if you don't use it, but you can still have a massive failure. There's not, who hasn't heard of a new lamb joining that was like 10%? There's been some disasters. So that, would that 10% that turn into 30%? With regular ewe lambs, you know, they really behave really differently. You know, early breeding of ewe lambs enhances lifelong productivity. And puberty is defined at a time when reproduction becomes possible. Do all ewe lambs come to puberty at the same time? No. Think back to your own puberty. Did it just happen like on Wednesday, you know, you were prepubescent and on Thursday – Everything had dropped into place and you were good to go. Or was it over a period of time? 
we seem to have forgotten that somehow. You know, it probably into the second year, the second lambing is when a ewe starts to hit a peak. I would argue it's years three, four, and five. 